Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that really supports your health and wellness. This week I'm sharing with you a step-by-step -step process that I use with all of my clients and it's all about one of the easiest and most impactful ways to create a healthy home without spending a lot of money. So this way is ventilation and we kind of use this as just an, a broad term for so many things and so it can become kind of ambiguous and a lot of people don't quite understand exactly what ventilating your home means and how to do it in a very efficient way so that we are bringing in fresh air from outside and getting the old toxic air out of your house. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I have a four step process that I use with my clients and then we're gonna talk about some different tools that you could purchase if you wanted to, to kind of up your ventilation game and really make sure the air inside your house is pure and something that really supports your body's wellness. We're also going to talk about why this even matters. So you know that when I teach you something, I don't want to just tell you how to do it. I want to tell you why. I think when you know why you do something, it's easier to remember to do it. It's also easier to remember how to do it because you understand the whole process. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about how your indoor air actually impacts your health and wellness because there have been so many studies done on our homes specifically and how they are creating an environment of either health and wellness or an environment that really burdens our systems. We're going to talk about both of those things. I have created some slides for you guys that we're going to go through next. And what it does is it really breaks down this week's blog post into little slides that are quick and easy to go through but if you're someone who likes to read the post click on links because I have linked all the studies that we're going to talk about as far as the impacts on your health go you can go to the blog post and I have that linked at the bottom of the video description otherwise let's get going and we'll learn how to really properly ventilate your home so we all know what overwhelm feels like because we've all faced it throughout our lives. And one of the best ways to cut down on overwhelm for me is to have a plan laid out. And usually it's taking specific steps in the order of importance. This is how I work best. And so that's exactly what I do with all my Healthy House clients. We work through their goals for their home and health and break it down into the most impactful but simple tasks first. It's kind of like a Venn diagram of ways to impact the health of your home and simple free tasks that you can do at home. And what always ends up in the middle of that Venn diagram for the winning task is ventilating your home. So you might be kind of wondering, what is that? It can be a bit of an ambiguous term. And so let me break it down for you. Ventilating your home is the fancy way of saying air it out or letting it breathe, essentially opening it up and letting the fresh, less toxic air from outside dilute your toxin-filled indoor air. In the best and most impactful way to immediately reduce toxins inside your home, in most cases, is ventilating. So believe it or not, there are more ways to do this than just opening a window here and there. The way I teach my clients is for it to become a permanent habit in their repertoire of healthy home tools that they use. It's quite literally the building block I use to help them create an environment at home that really supports their health and wellness. So first I want to talk about some of the indoor air quality factors that come into play. I always want to teach you the why behind this healthy house habit and not just the habit itself. I think that when you have a complete understanding as to why a habit works to support your health, you're more likely to do it on a regular basis. So first it's important to know that over the last few decades, our homes have become increasingly more energy efficient. And while this is a total win for energy use, indoor air quality has been affected because of it. So basically the indoor air that becomes filled with toxins like mold, spores, CO2, particulate matter, heavy metals, pesticides, radon, 
biological allergens and VOCs has no place to escape your home. It's stuck inside the energy efficient cocoon that you've created or we've created, leaving our bodies surrounded by these toxins. Another factor that comes into play is that our society spends more and more time indoors now than ever before. Most of us spend about 90% of our day inside and the majority of that time is spent inside our, our homes. And modern habits that include bathing and showering have also begun to affect our indoor air quality, raising off-gassing levels during these activities. And while we're talking about our habits and our homes, we can't forget all the items we put into our homes. So modern homes contain a slew of textiles, cushions, and carpets, all of which contain pesticides, toxins, and VOCs. Home furnishings and building materials alike are some of the most toxic things we bring into our homes. However, the majority of our society is completely unaware of these toxins that come with these things. And once we have these items inside, they can remain inside our home for months or years, the toxins can, because these building materials are created to withstand sunlight exposure and extreme temperatures, and so they don't ever truly break down but continuously move around our home in the form of which leads me to my last one, toxic dust. So let's add that to the list because household dust is filled with toxins from inside, like our carpets, foams, and textiles, as well as toxins from the outside, biological pollutants, pesticides, and heavy metals. Without properly cleaning your home, and removing dust on a constant basis, the dust becomes airborne and it's inhaled by those inside your home. So removing dust is more than just vacuuming, it's also cleaning filters, window screens, and getting dust out of the corners and off of places that we often forget about. So your indoor air does affect your health. Obviously the reason we care so much about indoor air quality at home is that it's negatively impacting our health and wellness right now. And the truth is many of us are completely unaware of this fact. Indoor air that contains toxins and pollutants that naturally occur in our home has been shown to negatively affect the immune system and respiratory system alike. Each toxin that is inside your home can negatively impact your health and wellness depending on which toxin is present. So toxins like lead have been shown to accumulate in the blood affecting muscles, joints, memory, and concentration. In children, it has been linked to learning disabilities, memory loss, and hyperactivity. VOCs are usually labeled as carcinogenic, elevating the risk of particular kinds of cancer within the body. And other toxins like dioxins are disruptive to the endocrine system and in turn can cause issues with the reproductive system, growth, thyroid, and elevate the risk of certain types of cancers. So not to mention that all of these toxins just put a huge strain on our liver as our bodies have to detoxify all these things that enter our system through inhalation, skin absorption, and ingestion. Quite often, these toxins have an extremely long half-life, meaning they stay in our system for long periods of time, allowing the toxins to build up to very unhealthy levels. This buildup is referred to as body burden and causes other systems within the body to malfunction as well. So home ventilation doesn't actually have to be complex at all. It's simply getting into the habit and sticking with it. So for starters, I suggest adding a task to your to-do list for the day or using phone reminders to help you remember the steps that we're going to go through. After a while, it kind of becomes second nature and your home will properly ventilate constantly as you keep up with these habits. So the best way to improve your indoor air quality is with natural home ventilation. This is simply opening windows and allowing fresh air to enter your home for as long as possible. When you practice home ventilation by opening windows, you not only let toxic air out of your home, but simultaneously you bring in fresh air to dilute any toxins present inside your home. Depending on your climate, and if you live in an area with high levels of outdoor air pollution, simply opening your windows throughout the day or overnight is an excellent way to improve home ventilation. 
Most homes have some sort of venting system that connects to a furnace or air conditioner unit, often referred to as an HVAC system. The central unit usually has a fan that pushes warm or cold air throughout your home and out of the vents. Your HVAC unit will usually have a thermostat that you can control the temperature in your home with. This is where you're gonna be able to control the fan setting as well. If you have a smart thermostat like Nest, you can turn on the fan setting from your phone. If you have a standard thermostat, there's usually a toggle switch, which indicates auto fan or fan on. If you choose the on setting, your fan will run continuously, even if the heat or air doesn't need to kick on. This is an excellent way to push air around your home, which will help dilute any toxins or gases present in your air. Fans in bathrooms, kitchens, and laundry areas are usually vented, meaning they pull air from inside your home using a fan and push the air outside through a vent that terminates on the exterior of your home. Use these fans whenever you can. Anytime you're cooking, bathing, or running your washer or dryer, you can also run the vented fan in that area. These fans not only help reduce moisture in your home, which can hold more toxins than dry air, but it will also pull any indoor air that contains toxins and expel the air outside your home. And finally, you can turn on ceiling fans. If your home has these, by all means, use them frequently. You may need to adjust the direction of your fan depending on the season. Each direction will help either cool a room or circulate warm air throughout a room. So make sure you change the direction when you're transitioning from heat to cooling or vice versa. So using a fan is gonna help move indoor air around so that air is moved out of the room in a more timely fashion. It also helps push air to your vents, which will then move it out of your house and draw new air inside. So put these tasks above on this screen on your phone, on your calendar to help you keep up with this healthy habit. Another part of home ventilation is making sure the air inside is as clean as possible. So these tools will help reduce toxins in your home, which will make ventilation even more efficient. So first off, a cleaning schedule. Manually removing dust through vacuuming, mopping, and wet dusting is one of the most effective ways to remove toxins from your home. House dust contains toxic particles from carpet, furniture, and textiles around your home not to mention pesticides and bacteria. So removing dust regularly means you're also removing toxins from your space at the same time. Now, if you live in an area that has high levels of pollution outdoors, this is gonna be your saving grace. Air purifiers pull indoor air into the unit through a fan. The air then travels through a series of filters, which removes dust particles, microbes, and toxins from the air. Another fan then pushes the air back out into your home. So as this sequence happens over and over again while you run your purifier, it removes more and more particles each time, leaving you with purified air. So I personally use Medify Air, and I have them linked in the blog post this week with a coupon code I know around this time of year they have lots of sales, so we use the MA40 in our common space, and in each bedroom we have the MA15. Their air purifiers are extremely affordable, they're very high quality, which can kind of be a hard combination to find. And so I would encourage you, if you're not gonna get a Medify Air, find something that's high quality for your home. You can also look at an indoor air quality monitor AirThings Indoor Air Quality Monitor is my absolute favorite. I have it linked in the blog post this week. It's high quality for homeowners. So without knowing what toxins are problematic in your home, you won't know how to treat your home. Homes that have high levels of CO2 are gonna have different a different game plan than homes that have high levels of particulate matter. It's so important to assess what's going on in your home before treating the problem. It's kind of like getting a little checkup for your house so you know exactly how to treat its ailments. And then finally, high quality HVAC fil HVAC filter. Filters on any of your appliances like furn furnaces, mini splits, 
air exchangers and air conditioners should be replaced frequently. So opt for a carbon filter that has a MERV rating of 12 or higher to reduce as many particles as possible. What you need to remember is that the more you filter out with a high quality filter, the more you'll need to replace the filter. A filter that is blocked with particles and contaminants not only doesn't do its job very well, but it can also damage your appliance by reducing proper airflow. So we use the Nordic Pure Air Filters. For our home, we buy a box of them and keep them next to our furnace. This is one of the best high quality filters that I have found and I have them linked on the website this week. So by implementing these steps and utilizing these tools on a regular basis, I have no worry at all that you'll be able to drastically improve your indoor air quality through proper home ventilation. It is one of the easiest and best ways to begin creating a healthy house right now. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you were able to implement this four part process in your own home. If you have any questions on ventilating your home or any of the tools that I mentioned, please feel free to either leave a message or send me an email. Otherwise, I will be back again next week with another healthy house tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and wellness.